Walk-ons, what's going on? It's Sam Stidwell, the walk-on coach. And today, I'm getting rid of the mystery. So many people threw out college acts. How are you able to be an architectural engineering student and an athlete? Um, It wasn't easy, but it can be done. And I'm going to tell you exactly how you can be a successful student athlete. I'm going to tell you exactly how I was able to be an athlete through our high school and graduate with a 4.0 GPA and graduate college with a 3.3 GPA. So let's get into it. So that was my architectural engineering portfolio combined with some football stuff and a little snippet of my college experience. So this video is helpful for all student athletes, but especially walk-on athletes because in my video, four things to do before you walk on, you know, I talk about picking a great major because as a walk-on, you know, we have nothing guaranteed. So you do not have the luxury Really, nobody has the luxury, but especially as a walk-on, you don't have the luxury to just pick an easy major just so you can play football and, and scrape by the academics. Don't do that. Do not. Please don't. I'm begging you. Pick a major. Pick a great major that you know that once you graduate, you know, if football doesn't work out, you'll be able to provide for yourself and your family. Please. And something that you'll be passionate about. So when people talk about, you know, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you are an engineer student and an athlete. And I mean, the reality is it does come with a price. It comes with a heavy price and it's not easy at all. Um, and I think the big overarching word is discipline, right? But within discipline, we're going to talk about time management. We're going to talk about anti-procrastination that's a big one and we're going to talk about sacrifice so some of the things we have to deal with as student athletes and specifically me one of the things is setting up classes early we have to take the early classes right because we have to fit in however many classes we need in that day from the earliest as possible but it has to be done before let's say two o'clock because by two o'clock we have to be at our position meetings um, on the football team and then practice would be right after that, right? So some of those days, so like as an engineer, my classes, my math classes, calculus one, calculus two, calculus three, um, differential equations. And I think, I think that's all, but uh, those classes always were like the late classes, right? So I always had to leave those classes early. And that's one of the worst classes to leave early, especially Calc 2 and Calc 3. Oh my God, y'all. It, it was so hard and I mean, you do miss some stuff. And I mean, even when I was present in Calculus 2 and Calculus 3, I was confused like, Lord, I'm looking at, you know, the teacher teaching, I'm looking at like, Lord, please help me when I get to this homework because I don't understand nothing that's going on right now. And that's what's going on in my mind. So it's not like I'm like a, a genius that was just getting everything. No, it took actual work for me to actually get the grades that I got and perform well and understand the concepts that were taught to me, right? So I always had to leave my math class early to rush to the field to make a meeting. So the first thing is getting comfortable with being by yourself because your schedule is going to be different than everybody else's because you're gonna be on the football team, right? But majority of the football team is not gonna pick the same major, especially if you pick a great major like engineering that may not be the easiest, right? Then the engineering students, 
they're meeting at six o'clock to do the homework, right? But you don't get out of practice till 6.30, then you gotta eat. So your schedule is gonna be different than theirs. You can't do the homework with them all the time. So what you're gonna have to do is duck off at some point in the day or at night. And that's when I did my homework at night most of the time and put in work. So time management and anti-procrastination go hand in hand. Um, so for example, I'll give you kind of what my schedule was. You know, a lot of times I would go wake up early and go lift uh, because we had to with the football team, lift weights at maybe six o'clock or some, t some days I'll lift later, like 11. But my classes will be early as, as can be started at like eight. And then I'll be in class from eight to maybe 1150 then i'll go eat at maybe 12 and then i'll have some more classes at one o'clock and then uh, my classes would end maybe 2 30 2 50 then i would have to rush to the field to go meet then i'll have practice after practice i would go eat again but then it was back to the room to do homework and you know i did as much as i could before it's time to go to sleep and that was majority of my days and that's okay that's just the reality and uh even when i wasn't playing football you know i that time where practice was i was usually at the gym because i was still an athlete i, mean, I you know in my mind i was still an athlete and preparing to play football right so similar type of schedule and uh with anti-procrastination the most important thing you know, you know, it's so funny that a lot of people talk about they didn't go to sleep at night because they had to do the homework. It was funny because I never pulled an all-nighter. And I mean, I don't understand fully why I never had to pull an all-nighter, but um, I'll tell you what I did do. Um, if we got homework, right, and I knew the homework was due next Friday, guess what i'm doing as soon as i hear if i have time i'll put it in my schedule to start that homework as soon as i get it that night i'll start it now you don't have to do it all in one night you know i'll start let's say we have 60 questions which we often did in physics and math homeworks and i think that's completely stupid that's too many questions and um so once i got it the that day or the next day i'll be starting that homework i would do maybe five of those 60, maybe 10 if I was feeling good. And then I would knock it out night by night. So by that next Monday, by that next Wednesday, I was already done homework due Friday. I can get ahead of something else now. That's what you have to do. It's not something I'm suggesting you have to do it. And um, because especially for athletes, you need your sleep so you can't afford to pull an all-nighter. You gotta set your schedule to where you can you know, do your work and get your sleep. And I was still able to go out and, and hang out with friends and all that. I went to North Carolina a and uh, HBCU, man, and it was jumping. I'm talking about party on Thursday, party on Saturday. Oh, I skipped Friday. Party on Saturday and then sometimes on Sunday. But guess what? You can't be at everything. That's just the life you chose. You set goals. And the life you have to live requires you to make some sacrifices so you can't be at everything. I didn't go out on Thursdays, ever. Fridays, I'll be rushing, sometimes sweating because I was rushing so much to try to get to a certain point in my homework before I could go out, right? And then I was still late sometimes. You can't be at everything. You're gonna have to be comfortable being by yourself you're gonna have to be comfortable in a room working by yourself while everybody else is out and they might even be texting you talking about how jumping it is out there. That's okay, man. This is the life you chose and it's one of the questions that I ask. And four things to do before you walk on. I ask, is this the life that you really wanna live? That's an important question to answer and the only way you can answer that question is if you know what that life entails. And I'm trying to inform you on what that life entails. And that's why I think this channel was so important. Now, I didn't do everything perfect. One of the biggest regrets that I have is that I didn't get as as involved early enough with my classmates, right? Um, because I was on the football team 
you know, in my headspace was, my headspace was, you know, just keep your head down, do your work, get to practice, because that's what it's all about. But when I quit, man, and I met the people in my class, and it was so much more benefit in getting to know them um, than it was focusing purely on football and just kind of not really taking advantage of those relationships, right? They helped me so much, and, and you know, that's one of my biggest regrets that I didn't get to know them early enough. And it's hard because of your schedule with you being an athlete, but just try to take advantage of those relationships as much as possible. So I hope I didn't talk your head off today. I think today's topic was so important, so I had to get the information out. I had to get you ready for the life that you are choosing. Um, so if you related to it, if you know, if you've already graduated and had some of the same experiences, drop a comment because it's always to hear it's always good to hear people who had the same experiences and if you're somebody who are pursuing being a student athlete, let me know. Let me know where you're from, what position, what sport, all that good stuff. I like to meet new people and you know, maybe I can be there for you if you have any other questions. But with that being said, thank y'all for watching. Sam Stitwell, the welcome coach.